So today we're going to talk about some reactions of organic compounds. A new type of reaction, the elimination reaction, as well as ones that we've seen before, uh, substitution and actually addition reactions. So an elimination reaction is where we remove atoms from an organic molecule to form a double bond. It's the opposite of addition reaction that we saw previously. And you can recognize an elimination reaction because the carbon atoms in the product are bonded to fewer atoms than they were in the organic reactant. You can see in our product, each carbon is bonded to only three things, whereas in the reactant, it was bonded to four. Haloalkanes, or alkyl halides, are an example of a compound that undergo elimination reactions, and they produce alkenes when they're heated in the presence of a strong base. That strong base can be something like sodium hydroxide, which you may be more familiar with, or your textbook uses a stronger base called sodium ethoxide that you can see here. Now, I've used sodium ethoxide in this example with bromoethane, and you can see our halogen atom is eliminated and we have a carbon-carbon double bond in our product. Our product, of course, with two carbons and a double bond is ethene. Now we've got two little side products, ethanol from the sodium ethoxide and also sodium bromide. Now I'll just run you through quickly what's happening in terms of the mechanism because sometimes knowing how things works helps you remember why you need all the reactants, for instance, the strong base. So first, this hydrogen atom is taken by the sodium ethoxide, by the strong base, a base is a proton acceptor, and the electrons from this bond are what become part of the double bond in our product. The bromine takes these electro the electrons from this bond with it uh, to make a bromide ion and then later becomes part of this uh, sodium bromide ionic compound. Keep in mind that if you're using a, another strong base like sodium hydroxide or NaOH, you're not going to get the ethanol here as you wouldn't have the ethoxide group from the sodium ethoxide. Instead, you're going to form water. Now when you have more than two or three carbons, you have to start thinking about where your double bond is going to end up. For instance, with this compound, to chlorobutane, we can either form the double bond between these two carbons by eliminating this hydrogen, or between these two carbons by eliminating this hydrogen. The general rule that we're going to use is that the hydrogen is removed from the carbon that has the most carbon-carbon double bonds. And so it's going to be removed from the third carbon because this carbon is bonded to two other carbons, whereas the first carbon is only bonded to one other carbon. So if the hydrogen on carbon three is eliminated, you can see that our double bond is going to end up between carbon two and carbon three. And so our major product, or the product we have the most of, is going to be butuene with the double bond between carbon two and carbon three. You still might get some elimination of this hydrogen on carbon 1, so you might get a little bit of butuene um, produced as a minor product or a product that is only produced in small amounts. And of course, we're also going to form water and sodium chloride in this reaction. So substitution reactions we've seen before, it's where a hydrogen atom or functional group is replaced by a different atom or functional group. So we can see here that our carbon atom has some functional group Y, and we have another small molecule, and in the process, our, we've replaced our functional group with this new functional group Z. We can recognize substitution reactions because you can see that two compounds react to form two other compounds. And the carbon atoms in the reactants are bonded to the same number of atoms in the organic products. So that functional group in our reactant, it could be hydrogen, it could be an OH group, or it could be a halogen. And indeed, we're going to revisit substitution reactions after we talk about the OH functional group in a future video. 
So remember, alkanes undergo substitution, but they're relatively unreactive, so we need a lot of energy, and we need to supply that as UV or a lot of heat. So if we act, react bromine gas with cyclohexane in the presence of UV light or a lot of heat, we end up with bromocyclohexane. Now our bromine has our bromine has replaced the hydrogen that in this line diagram we know to be attached to that carbon. Now we talked about in the previous video that benzene is a special class of compound called an aromatic compound. And we know that like alkanes, aromatics are very, very stable. So in order to substitute one of the hydrogens on benzene, a catalyst is required. And that catalyst is F FeBr3 in this case. And our products are bromobenzene and hydrogen bromide. Now this is not an addition reaction, and we know that because bromine has replaced the hydrogen that was previously bonded to this carbon. I'd also like to briefly revisit addition reactions. And addition reactions are where we're adding atoms onto either a double bond, like in this alkene, or a triple bond, uh, such as in an alkyne. Now this small molecule here could be diatomic, like bromine gas or chlorine gas, and if we remember, that makes a dihaloalkane because both of these um, atoms are the same, or it could be um, a hydrogen halide, like hydrogen bromide or hydrogen chloride um, that is adding across the double bond, and that's going to make a haloalkane because one of these atoms is hydrogen and one of them ends up being the halogen. We also saw adding hydrogen or water across that double bond to make other types of organic compounds. Now the exact same thing could happen with a carbon-carbon triple bond or an alkyne, but of course our product wouldn't have these bonds here and instead you would still have a carbon-carbon double bond um, in your product. Now in our example, we're adding bromine across this double bond in our cyclohexene, and we're making bromocyclohexane. Um, we've changed the ending to ane, of course, because now our cyclic compound only has single bonds. And by bromocyclohexane, of course, I mean 1,2-dibromocyclohexane, because I totally forgot to draw in the other bromine. So now you've learned about different kinds of organic compounds, well a few of them anyway, and you've learned a few of their reactions, so you can start to see how some organic synthesis might work. Say you wanted to make a haloalkane. Well we know that you can make them from alkanes uh, through a substitution reaction. All you need is a halogen and some UV or some heat. But we know we can also make them from alkenes. And for this addition reaction, we just need a hydrogen halide or a halogen. We can also make alkanes from alkenes. If you remember the hydrogenation reaction, we just need hydrogen gas um, and platinum as a catalyst. Or um, Don't forget the catalysts. They're very easy things to forget. Now we've been thinking of these reactions as separate entities, but imagine you wanted to make an alkane, but you didn't have any of the alkene that you needed. Remember, we can make an alkene from a haloalkyne through an elimination reaction. All we need is a strong base, either a hydroxide or sodium ethoxide, for example. We also saw another kind of addition reaction, if you'll remember, a hydration reaction where we added water across a double bond um, with a sulfuric acid catalyst, and that put a hydrogen on one side of the double bond and a hydroxide on the other type side of the double bond, and that made um, an alcohol. And we're going to learn more about alcohol uh, as an organic compound in the next video. Uh, through the unit, we're going to start to fill out this little reaction web a little bit more. We're going to see how elimination reactions can take us from back from alcohols to alkenes. We're going to see how we can go from alcohol all the way to haloalkenes. Um, haloalkanes, sorry. Yes, yeah, so we're going to learn about some more functional groups and some more organic reactions in the upcoming videos.